Hey guys, Lewis here with Premium Beam, and today we're going to be exploring the curves. Across all software, this is a typical representation of the curve graph. The default neutral position of the curve is a diagonal line that runs from the lower left of black point of the graph through to the upper right of the white point. The graph itself is split into two axes. The horizontal axis signifies the range of image tonality from the clip you're working on, while the vertical axis represents the range of adjustments you can make. So what are the tonal regions? Well, typically with this graph, it will be split into three tonal regions, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. But with an unlimited amount of curve points to be added, we can incrementally manipulate the entire region to how we see fit. So if we wanted to make the overall image darker, I could add a control point to the center and drag the curve down. If I wanted to remap the white and black points to either compress or expand the signal, I could bring these inward. If I wanted to lift the highlights and midtones without adjusting the shadows, I could create a control point on the shadow and then lift the highlights, which organically also lifts the midtones, but the shadows stay unaffected. And we can see the difference if I remove the control point. So how do we do that? Well, to add a control point, you simply click anywhere on the curve with the left mouse button. And by pressing the right mouse button, it will remove that control point. Additionally, in Resolve, you can also click these ellipses and there is a setting that will add default anchor points. Now, as initially noted, we have those two default control points, the black control point and the white control point. If you drag the black control point up, it makes a lift adjustment to raise the shadows and then dragging it right will lower the shadows and likewise, that's going to be the same for the white point and the highlights. And it's all we're really doing here is the same function of the primary wheels of raising the lift. But unlike the curves, if we then wanted to make an adjustment to the midtones, we'd have to then jump over to the gamma wheel. Whereas with the curve, we can just make the control point to adjust the midtones. Now, although the curve appears to be a singular curve, the custom curve editor is actually presented as a series of superimposed curves as the Y RGB curves all appear within a single editor. However, before we proceed with the RGB curves, let's first explore the Luma curve to see what type of adjustments we can make without adjusting the color wheels or any other parameter found on the color dashboard. So this is a shot that was recorded in a log format. So it's devoid of saturation and contrast, and we can see that in the scopes. So using the color wheels, uh, I would probably do something like this. I'd bring down the shadows. This was shot at 5 a.m. So the wall would naturally be pretty dark. So if it falls into shadows, uh, that's fine. I'm gonna bump up the mid slightly, but then significantly uh, really stretch the highlights so we can bring that sky to life. But of course, be mindful of the scopes. So now let's see how we can replicate that using the custom curves. So first, I'm going to bring the black control point across to decrease the shadow. To what point do I do that? Well, the custom curves and the HSL curves all show a histogram that represents the input of the selected correction node, which you can use to guide your adjustments. And you will note that if you swap to a new node, the histogram now displays the new input data from the prior correction. So those blacks are fine. And then using the white control point, I will bring that back up to raise the highlights. But with that control point in place, we can start manipulating the midtones region. Every time you place a new control point to make a new adjustment, it locks out the preceding tonal region from being adjusted. So this can either be a blessing or a curse, but for the most part, you only really want to be working with a couple control points on your curve. So there, we have a few curve control points. I've decreased the shadows, adjusted the midtones, and brought the highlights to be visible. So let me reset these points and just run over the regions one more time. The lower quarter of the graph will adjust the shadows. The middle half will adjust the midtones and the upper quarter will adjust the highlights. Okay, so previously I mentioned that the custom curve graph also allows you to adjust the RGB values, red, green, and blue. And we can do that by highlighting the active color channel we want to adjust. To do this, select the corresponding color channel and the link that combines all four curves will be broken, allowing you to adjust the Luma red, blue, or green color curve, depending on what you select. So the way that these curves work is exactly the same as the luminance curve. For example, the bottom of the red curve will increase or decrease the presence of red, 
you push up to add and pull down to subtract. And likewise, the top of the curve will increase or decrease the presence of red in the highlights and so forth. So with this, you now might be able to see how exactly the curves work in comparison to the color wheels. So adding red on the left wheel works almost identical to increasing red to the shadow end of the curve. However, with the individual RGB curves, it's important to note that they work in a, an additive and subtractive manner, I guess you could say. So what do I mean by this? Well, if you feel like your shot is too warm, you look at the scope and you see that the red value has a larger presence than blue, and you might think, well, let's add some blue to cool it down. Well, in fact, you would be better served to pull the red out of the shadows by lowering the curve down. Now, this is just one of six total curve adjustments available within Resolve, the other five being the HSL curves, which is an acronym for hue, saturation, and luminance. Thankfully, I don't have to explain how each one works because even though they operate very differently from the custom curve, they all operate identically to each other. However, the operation between each HSL curve will vary. That was a mouthful to say. <laughs> to understand the practice, let's have a look at the hue versus saturation curve. Like the custom curve, we have a histogram within the curve graph. However, you will notice that the curve is displayed differently. We have a more elongated graph with a horizontal curve and with the hue spectrum present. The information within the histogram directly represents what is present within the viewer. So in this shot, there's an abundance of green and blue, and that's also described here. So if I wanted to make an adjustment to the saturation for the blue hue, I could take two control points around the spike and then increase or decrease the hue. And we can see the change reflected on screen. Alternatively, if we move over the preview monitor, a qualification tool appears, and upon selecting any hue in this image, the corresponding control point will appear in the curve graph. This is much preferred and a lot more efficient. So in a single image, we could increase the green saturation while decreasing the saturation of the blue, all in one curve, all in one node. And this works in the same way right across the four other HSL curves. Although the luminance versus saturation and the saturation versus saturation are slightly different and perhaps somewhat more niche in their use, for example, if we pull up the Loom vs. Sat, the graph is now monochromatic, and this represents the saturation levels from the black to the white points of the image. So if I just make a few control points here, we can decrease the saturation of only the darker areas of the image. So yeah, the curves are very powerful indeed. If you want to see some color grading in action, where I specifically use the curves quite a lot, you can find a time lapse, which was recently released here on the Premium Beat YouTube channel. I'm sure it's going to appear somewhere around this box. So my name is Lewis, and I will catch you guys next time.